Assalamu alaikum everyone. Hello. How are you feeling today? How are we feeling today? Angry. angry. Yeah, we're angry. We're here to stand for Palestine. So as you may know, my name is Farah. I'm a student at Rhode Island College. I am the president of Students for Justice in Palestine. And we're here to stand for Palestine once again. We will continue to stand for Palestine until Palestine is free. So let's start off with some chants. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free, free Palestine. Free, free, free Palestine. Free, free, free Palestine. Free, free, free Palestine. Now we all know they hate this one. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. Give it up for yourselves. I need some noise today, okay? We need to scream for Palestine always. Now I'm going to introduce our, another, our other MC, my mom. Assalamu alaikum all. Hello to everyone. Thank you for coming out on this cold day. I saw it was 42 degrees and I thought, oh, it's not bad. Well, the wind kind of ruins it. Um, but it also makes me think of my brothers and sisters in Gaza right now in the severe cold. They don't have covers. They don't have jackets. They don't have socks. The little babies are sleeping literally with their feet in puddles of water. Shame. I'm sure you guys are following the news. This rally is going to be uplifting, yet very sad. There are moments in the day where we are anxious, sad, angry, uh, sometimes defeated. But we got to pick up, right? So I ask you guys, what do you want to say to Netanyahu? How about this one? Netanyahu, what do you say? How many kids have you killed today? Netanyahu, what do you say? How many kids have you killed today? Louder. Be angry. Netanyahu, what do you say? How many kids did you kill today? Thank you guys. And now um, I'm introducing uh, Lubna. Lubna is a Palestinian who is um, from the Palestinian Feminist Collective and um, a friend of mine now and an amazing, amazing person. Uh, give her up for her. Assalamu alaikum. The grief that we are coming to hold after 140 days of this genocide doesn't belong to the last 140 days. We're holding over a century of genocide in our hearts, in our bodies, in our souls. At least 100 years in Palestine, thousands of years in many other places. This genocide didn't begin on October 7th. It didn't even begin in 1948. It began when the British lied to the Arabs, when they parceled our land, when they promised us sovereignty, but instead bankrolled and financed and funded militias to come and destroy our homes and expel us from our own economy and dispose of our labor and settle in our land. Had they come as guests, had they come as refugees, the Palestinians would have welcomed them with open arms and hearts the way we do for anyone in our households. 
but they came as settlers to expel us from our land, to ex eject us from our own economy. And they were armed and did it by force. So by 1948, when Zionist militias usurped and naturalized by force Jewish claims to 78% of Palestine. Shame. Shame. Shame! It is no wonder that the Palestinians held a deep and emotional wound inside of them. 15,000 Palestinians were expelled, uh, were, were, were massacred between 1947 and 1949. 750,000 Palestinians were expelled from their homes during the original Nakba. And it's not just that that Nakba started then and Palestinians weren't able to return or weren't able, able to overcome that wound. It's that Nakbas happen every couple weeks and every couple months, both inside of the heartland of Palestine and to Palestinians all over the world. Shame. 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 We've experienced other Nakbas. In 1967, when almost 400,000 Palestinians were turned refugees. In 1956, in Kofar Qasim, we experienced the Nakba and the destruction and the exodus of Palestinian refugees. In Tal Zatar and Jasir al Basha camp in 1975 in Lebanon. The massacre of thousands of Palestinians in Sabran Shatila camp in 1982. The massacre and destruction of thousands uh, uh, of homes for Palestinians in Nahar al-Barid and Ayn al-Hilwa. The expulsion of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians from Syria within the last 10 years alone. The expulsion of thousands of Palestinians from Iraq during the Gulf War and during the 2003 war. Palestinians have had enough of this Nakba. We want to go home. We want to go home. Yes. For over a century we have been killed, brutalized, expelled from our homes, and told to be quiet about it, told to be patient, told that with time we will see recourse. All we have seen is more land and life lost. That's right. In this last genocide, it has been one of the most egregious. Our, the numbers of the martyrs extends to almost 40,000 right now. Shame. 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 And the reason why I'm giving this talk today is because as we all know, we've been watching the news and seeing that what we are fearing, what we have been fearing for the last 140 days may be coming true. Is a mass expulsion possible? Is a full annihilation of the people in the Gaza Strip possible? We are hearing the news of Egypt building a wall in the Sinai Peninsula. Shame. We are hearing the news of them purchasing large swaths of land in other Arab countries and evicting Egyptians in their own cities of Port Said. We know that if it was up to Netanyahu, he would kill us all. But under world pressure, he knows he has to try to at least do it slower. So right now, even though we have been fighting and protesting and rallying for 140 days plus, it is time to ignite, reignite our resistance here in the belly of the beast. We will not allow an expulsion of Palestinians from Rafah. We will not allow the killing of all Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. And we will not allow any more Palestinian land and life to be taken. Because we are with Palestine and the entire world is with Palestine. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine!
Once again, we want to thank you all for uniting here. If you don't mind just shifting this way a little bit so that we can all be in a space together. As we stand here today in the belly of the beast, as Lubna said, we stand for all of the Palestinians who have lost their lives. We stand for Hind and Rim and Bisan. We stand for Hamza al-Dahtuh and Wa'al al-Dahtuh. We stand. We stand screaming justice will prevail because it will, God willing. But until we see it, we scream justice is our demand. No peace on stolen land. No peace on stolen land. Justice is our demand. Justice is our demand. No peace on stolen land. 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 We want justice, you say how? We want justice, you say how? Lift the siege on Gaza now. Lift the siege on Gaza now. We want justice, you say how? We want justice, you say how? Lift the siege on Gaza now. Lift the siege on Gaza now. Give it up for yourselves and for Palestine. Next, I would like to introduce a prominent figure in the Muslim community and someone who speaks out for justice of all people, Imam Abdul Latif. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Wa alaikum assalam. Peace be upon you. All those who stand and protest for justice, stand for what is right stand for the who are concerned for the well-being of not only themselves but for all human beings on this earth this is this should be the desire of every human being that we have concern for every single one who's being oppressed on this earth we have to speak up we have to stand up so it's my job not only to remind myself but to remind everybody Every gathering we're in, we have to remind each other because what ends up happening, you see, God called the human being insan. I N S A A N, insan. The, this word in Arabic comes from the from the verb nesia, means he forgot or to forget. Because the condition, the nature of the human being, they always forget. They're always forgetting about their responsibility, about doing what is right. But it's the responsibility of other human beings when one of their brothers or sisters from the human being forget is it is our job to remind them. It is our job to tell them what they're doing is not right. So insan, it comes from the word Insane. I mean, insane comes from this word, this root, insane. Insane is the one who has lost his intellect. He has lost his mind. Because why? Because he is not behaving correctly. He is not behaving in the social sphere of things the correct way. Right? So he has lost his mind. And this mind is called the aqal, the intellect. God in the Quran always mentions, why do you use your intellect? Why? Because they are following their desires. They are following the, they are, they are egotistic. And this is what we see now from the, uh, our brothers and sisters. Yeah, they are our brothers and sisters, but they are not behaving correctly. They are behaving incorrectly. They are behaving devilishly, like a devil with no concern for the Palestinians. But we cannot allow them to continue on this path. We have to stand up, we have to speak up, we have to cry, we have to raise our hands. We have to write, we have to speak to our politicians. We have to enforce the rule of justice. Because, in, especially in America, the American government and the majority of people have been on the, in, in history, have been on the wrong side of history. But it was the people who pulled them and, and reminded them to, to make some positive changes in America. And there are more positive changes needed here in America. Even though we are not there, 
in Palestine, we can make changes from here. We, we can affect the world, and we are affecting the world. Even though the media, they have their own agenda, but in, 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 in time, they will be on the right side too. But it's up to us to, to push them and to force them to do what is right. America is, is known as the country of democracy. They were, they, they weren't, America wasn't always democratic. In, in uh, the Israel, they say they, they are the only democratic nation in, in the Middle East. Lie. What a lie. What is the definition of democratic? To kill, to malign, to bomb. If that is, the, is, that, if that is what you call democratic, I don't, want to, I, want any, I don't want any part to do with that. And, and anyone in any country who's supporting that form of democracy, they are in the same boat. I don't want anything to do with them. So brothers and sisters, do not, God said, do not lose faith. Do not give up. Keep striving. Keep moving. We are on the right way. We are on the right path. You are on the right path. Keep moving, keep going. Keep marching, keep protesting. Don't give up. God willing, the change will come. The change will come. God bless you. Give it up for our brother Abdul Latif who has not missed one rally. Jazakallah yeah. khairan, brother. Every time the media lies, every time the media lies. So I just wanted to shed light on something that you may not know. We've created a little group um, where we make phone calls on a daily basis to our politicians. How many of you make your calls? Woo! Give it up to yourselves, guys. I'm so proud of you. Well, let me tell you something. Jack Reed is not listening. Say! Sheldon Whitehouse is not listening. Yes. Seth Magaziner is not listening. Yes. And Gabe Amo is not listening. Yes. But what are we going to tell them all? We're not going to stop. We will not stop. I like that one. Fire them. With that being said, um, I want to introduce today Joel. Joel is a member of Jewish Voice for Peace, who is a very outspoken uh, member. And when it comes to the Palestinian plight, he is um, our biggest ally. Say hello to Joel. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out today. Um, my name again is Joel Reinstein. I'm a member of Jewish Voice for Peace. I actually, uh, I want to address people who are not here today, um, not because they couldn't make it, but because uh, maybe they're horrified by what they see on the news, but they struggle with mixed feelings uh, about a conflict that seems to them to be complicated, or they feel that they don't know enough. And I hope that some of those people are able to see this on Instagram or somewhere else uh, in the news. What I want to say to them is genocide is not complicated. Palestinians want to live free in their homeland 
Israel wants the land to be free of Palestinians. The solution is freedom and equality, as we will continue to say, no matter what the Zionists tell us, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. And to the people who are struggling with mixed feelings, you've probably heard about how Israel has killed over 12,000 children in Gaza. Maybe you've seen a video in which Israeli soldiers delight in the destruction of schools, shops, or places of worship. Maybe you've seen a video in which unarmed grandmothers or teenagers waving white flags are deliberately shot and killed by Israeli soldiers. Maybe you've heard the audio of six-year-old Hind Rajab pleading with the Red Cross dispatcher, it's the Red Crescent, but it's the same organization, pleading with the dispatcher to please send help She's keeping her composure while she's terrified. And you can hear, if you listen to this phone call, you can hear the dispatcher using her teacher voice. Uh, using the voice that you use when you talk to a six-year-old. She's calling her sweetie. She's trying to keep her calm while Hind is in a car surrounded by her relatives who have been murdered by Israeli soldiers. The Red, the Red Crescent, the Red Cross, got Israel's permission to send paramedics to rescue Hind. They gave Israel the exact location and everything before Israeli soldiers murdered the paramedics and murdered Hind. Now multiply that by tens of thousands of people killed systematically and obviously deliberately by a military whose soldiers and leaders both repeatedly deny that there is any such thing as an innocent civilian in Gaza. It would be really easy to shake your head and say, this is very sad. It would be easy to make the mistake of thinking that this genocide is only about revenge or to think only that Israel is quote unquote going too far. But long before October 7th, Israel has violently removed as many Palestinians as possible from as much of the land as possible. Genocide is not complicated. Palestinians want to live free in their homeland Israel wants the land to be free of Palestinians. And if you find yourself unsure or feel that you don't know enough about this conflict, the North Star to follow is freedom and equality. Over 75 years, Israel has forced millions of Palestinians out of their homes at gunpoint. And Israel has prohibited these refugees from return on pain of death. And they have enforced that consistently since 1948 all the way through the present. In 2018, refugees in Gaza protested by the tens of thousands at the fence that Israel caged them in, and Israeli soldiers killed over 200 of them while maiming tens of thousands. Israel's penalty for being a Palestinian in Palestine is death. So for those who want to be impartial, who want to acknowledge both sides, ask yourselves what it would mean if Palestinians and Israeli Jews lived in the same country with freedom and equality under the law, do you think that would be fair to both sides? If there was freedom and equality? If Israelis had to accept Palestinians as their neighbors? Because that freedom and equality is what Zionists are saying over and over again would be the quote unquote destruction of Israel. Zionists say that Palestinians' demand for equal rights is the quote-unquote denial of the Jewish people's right to self-determination, and they say that even the tens of thousands of Jews like me in Jewish Voice for Peace and my comrades who are here today, yeah, the Zionists call us anti-Semitic because we want freedom and equality for Israeli Jews and Palestinians, and we want, to stay, we want an end to the genocide. And here in the United States, these insane, absolutely insane, obvious lies are being echoed in the halls of power. So we have been saying in Jewish Voice for Peace that Palestinians do not need our Jewish permission to exist as human beings. And you who are on the fence, who are not here today, who are watching this video, who are struggling with the horrible events that we are, are living through, you don't need Jewish permission to stand up for Palestine either. But you do need to ask yourself, what do you think is going to happen here in the United States if you don't stand up? What is going to happen if Israel's genocidal racism is normalized here? 
If freedom and equality are officially defined here in the United States as anti-Semitism, and if genocide is defined as quote-unquote self-defense, what does your future look like? If you're worried about Donald Trump, if you're worried about fascism, then for God's sakes, do something about it. That's right! Yeah. We cannot do this for you. The people who are at home, the people who are struggling with their feelings about this, those of us who are here, we cannot do this by ourselves. That's right! We need you. And you don't have to agree with everything that everyone here says or believes. You don't have to be Muslim or Arab or a socialist or for that matter, you don't have to be Jewish. You just need to be human. That's right. We can win this fight if and when we have the courage to stand together for the sake of freedom and equality, for the sake of our shared future. In our thousands, in our millions, we are all Palestinian. In our thousands, in our millions, we are all Palestinian. In our thousands, in our millions, we are all Palestinians. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joel. So while uh, Joel is, was speaking, I thought of something. Um, a lot of people want to be neutral. Well, guess what? That will not work for me. Does that work for you? No. I say neutrality is complicity. No. Repeat after me. Neutrality is complicity. Neutrality is complicity. You're either with us or against us. You're either pro-genocide or anti-genocide. Pick a side. But don't tell me you're neutral. You can't be neutral for genocide. So I don't know if you guys know this. We're going to do, we're going to take a little march to Providence Place. We're going to shut it down today. That's right. People are forgetting to boycott. We're still boycotting people. People are forgetting there is no business as usual as long as there's a genocide happening. I don't care what holiday is coming, Ramadan, Easter, any other holiday. No business as usual. When, bomb, when you are shopping, bombs are dropping. When you are shopping, bombs are dropping. That's right. So what I want from you, grab one of these babies if you would like, and we're going to follow that banner over there. Do you want to? All right, thank you guys. Turn around and let's do this. Let y'all go. Hey, uh, so I got a, uh, got the phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, and, and we, uh, archive. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get, go get ahead of him. But what? Well, one last time if I can grab you. Yeah, yeah, of course. You, my stuff is all up on my... my just write to me and remind me about and I'll send you a direct link. I won't probably have it up until tomorrow morning. I don't, be, I don't see myself working hard.
and Gaza. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Abdullah. I'm a Palestinian Muslim American. Uh, today, I stand before you to shed light on the strength and resilience of the Palestinian men. Men, men who watch their whole families be bombed in front of them. Men who pick their children up from outside of the rubble. Men picking up babies. <clears throat> One cannot begin to comprehend the anguish and heartbreak the Palestinian men experience as they witness their families being killed. That's right. In their homes, which they have worked tirelessly to build, being demolished by bombs. The emotional toll of such atrocities is <clears throat> immeasurable, leaving scars that may never fully heal. That's right. <clears throat> it is deeply disheartening that Palestinian men who are heroes in their own right are often portrayed as terrorists in the eyes of Western media. I am portrayed as a terrorist to Western media. As a Palestinian man, I can only imagine the dehumanization I would face if I were to enter Palestine, my homeland. Despite the immense challenges they face in Palestine, men continue to embody strength resilience and hope to rise above the adversities they encounter driven by their love for their families their communities and for their homeland it is this very strength that fuels the determination to fight for justice equality and for peace that's right yes, yes. it is our collective responsibility to change the narratives that dehumanize the demonized Palestinian men. We must recognize their, he their heroism, their sacrifices, and their unwavering spirit. <laughs> By doing so, we contribute to, more, to a more just and compassionate world where every individual is seen for who they truly are. That's right! Yes. And to conclude this all, let us remember the strength of Palestinian men who endure unimaginable hardships with unwavering determination. Let us stand together in solidarity, advocating for justice and inequality for all. Inequality for all. Together, we can rewrite the narrative and create a world where heroism is celebrated. That's right. And the dignity of every human being, being is upheld. Like our Palestinian brothers, let us keep our heads high and keep fighting for their justice. And let, let us be the voice for the ones who cannot be heard. Up, up with liberation. Up, up with liberation. Down, down with occupation. Down, down with occupation. Up, up with liberation. Up, up with liberation. Down, down with occupation. Down, down with occupation. Up, up with liberation. Up, up with liberation. Today, I gotta tell you, she's amazing. <clears throat> she is a prominent member of the Muslim community. She's a poet. She texted every single member of our phone call group, which is over 255 people, in person to invite them to today's rally. Allahumma <laughs> Dalik. Um, Sister Kevil has great poetry. Um, she is going to give you a piece of a poem that she uh, wrote recently. Uh, give it up to Sister Kavo. Assalamu alaikum to everybody here. And peace be upon all of you. When I was 10 years old, I moved from Massachusetts down to North Carolina. And I spent 15 years living in Chapel Hill. Michael Jordan, anyone know he went to school in Chapel Hill? So I spent 15 years in Chapel Hill. It's a little island of tolerance, but the scary thing about living in North Carolina 
If you go five or ten minutes in any direction, you hit KKK country very quickly. The first thing I noticed when I moved down there in fourth grade was the cafeteria. The students segregated themselves. Shame! Shame! Um, the N-word was rampant. Shame! And it was an awful place to grow up. I always was determined to move back up north to raise my own family so they, the kids are not exposed to that racism. Woo! And the poem that I'm going to read today is from my personal experience with the KKK. It is called Zionism, the KKK of the Jewish faith. Everyone knows the KKK hated black people, but how did their radical power come to be? It started in late 1865 on a cold December evening in Pulaski, Tennessee. A half dozen men chatted around the fire, six ex-soldiers of the failed Confederacy who had lost the Civil War fighting for the South. They were enraged the North ended slavery. These bitter men agreed that giving up their slaves had somehow tarnished their honor. They decided to humiliate the recently freed blacks to reinstate that lost feeling of power. Wearing long white robes and tall pointy hats, they intimidated sleeping families at all hours. They rode their horses at night, setting fires alight, and always covering their faces like cowards. In 1955, along came a case that galvanized Americans with justice in their sights. 14-year-old Emmett Till was abducted and murdered for simply looking at a woman who was white. He was tortured and lynched. His lifeless body was thrown in the Tallahatchie River that night. His mutilated corpse was displayed in an open casket. His swollen face ignited the fight for civil rights. Emma Till's interaction with a woman who was white violated an unwritten code. His killers bore false witness and an all-white jury's acquittal revealed the KKK's control. The white skin color of the murderers saved them from jail and out of court they arrogantly strode. Later they admitted their guilt to a magazine and were paid 43000 for the story they sold. These, those gruesome photos from Emmett Till's funeral forced America to confront its racist history. Just a few months later, his savage death inspired the determined people of Montgomery. They boycotted the buses for 381 days. They had enough of white supremacist... They had enough of white supremacist luxury. Rosa Parks sat so that Ruby Bridges could walk. Their unwavering perseverance earned them victory. Let's turn our attention to the similar path the Zionists took in the land of Palestine. They were welcomed as refugees after surviving the Holocaust, but they did not waste any time. In two years, they kicked out 750,000 Palestinians. They believed their right to kill was divine. They massacred hundreds of innocent families. They had no hesitation to commit war crimes. Over the past 75 years, Palestinians have been abused with unfair laws and discrimination. They are second-class citizens forbidden from basic rights, denied from even having their own nation. The Zionists, the Zionists have been on a murderous rampage with the goal of Palestinian annihilation. They are the KKK 1,000 times worse. They are the masters of the art of extermination. The Israeli soldiers have committed too many atrocities to mention inside this one poem. 14,000 children murdered in 140 days of war. Each was a daughter or a son. The innocent idea of victims are the topic of my next poem, but here I will mention a specific one. Perhaps the killing of little Hind Rajab will convince the world that Zionist terror must end. If Emmett Till's murder inspired a movement, so just wait until you hear about this killing. The sorrowful story of sweet six-year-old Hen Rajab is shocking, disturbing, and chilling. She was in a car with her four cousins escaping falling bombs when the Israelis started shelling. Gunfire, gunfire erupted, all her relatives were killed, and she was left alone on the phone crying. The Red Crescent recorded her family's last moments as the Israelis murdered them each. The panic and terror are crystal clear as the gunshot silenced her cousin's last screams. Injured Hind was left alive to beg for help. She spent hours expressing her pain and fears. I'm afraid they are shooting us. Please come save me, she wailed as the Israeli soldiers neared. Save! Save! 
the Red Crescent alerted the Israeli army about the location of this little girl who survived with hopes that those monsters would have the heart to care and help her to reunite. With her parents and siblings, they were worried to death. They didn't want their daughter to die. Two ambulance drivers rushed to rescue little Hind. Allah blessed them with the courage to try. For once, mainstream media across the world united to express their sincere condemnation. Twelve days ticked by and her family waited with heart-wrenching prayers and frustration. At last the bombing stopped and her family went to search. They found a scene of complete devastation. Both the car and the ambulance were unrecognizable, burned and bombed beyond any recognition. The final hours of Little Hind, the whole world listened in. It is a lesson in our humanity. To go on with our lives and ignore Palestine's cries would be nothing short of insanity. We must save our grief for later. There's no time to cry. How many more hymns will there be? Why can't the world's leaders open their eyes and put an end to Zionist brutality? The KKK claimed that they were all pious Christians and that God made the white race dominant. They undermined the intelligence of darker skinned people and demanded that they be subservient. They misquoted verses from the Holy Bible to justify treating them like maids and servants. They falsely claim that to be a Bible-thumping Christian, you must accept that prejudice is inherent. <laughs> Zionism is no different, just the script is flipped. They believe they have a holy God-given right to murder and arrest, bomb and harass, to kick the Palestinians out and commit genocide. Why is it so easy to condemn the KKK when they tar and feather an old man who is not white? Yet world leaders donate millions to Zionist tyrants and blame the 30,000 victims who have died. So now do you see, how could you not agree that the Zionists are just the KKK on steroids? Make believe news during Fox interviews and mainstream media manipulation is just a ploy. After 75 years of aggression and occupation, their only goal left is to completely destroy. They must flatten and conquer, wipe out the sea of Amalek, kill every non-Jewish girl and boy. Zionism is the opposite of the values held dear by the founding fathers of the United States. We may not have achieved all our goals at this time, but we are striving to get to a place where every American has equal opportunity, regardless of religion, nationality, or race. Anyone who claims that Israel is a democracy with liberty and human rights, I say that is a disgrace. Yep. If everyone on earth followed the laws of our religion, we would their religion, we would not be embroiled in genocide. We would have understanding and harmony, cooperation and empathy. Hate would be put to the side. Why waste money on war when we should feed the poor? Hungry children should not be denied. Let's find a solution, work together towards peace, and let our true religion serve as our guide, inshallah. <laughs> No matter what, no matter when. 
Next, I would like to introduce our last speaker, Khalil, who is an active Palestinian Muslim. He comes from the mountain of fire, Nablus, in Palestine. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Peace be upon everyone here attending. First of all, I want to thank everyone here for coming in this cold weather, for coming and standing up for the justice without any mind of race or religion or anything else. Yes. To be a human, to be a human, you should not follow anything. You can follow your heart. This heart that God created for you will tell you the truth. That's right. I came from a city, it's called Nablus. Woo! I was born 30 years ago in a Christian hospital. Woo! In my city, we have Christians, we have Muslims, we have Jewish. Woo! That we live long time together until now, until those days. We don't know who is a Jewish, who is a Muslim, who is a Christian. We live together in a natural city, natural country all together. That's right. In that city, now like you will say like why he's speaking about that. Because like you listen at the media, you see everyone thinking that those Muslims want to get rid of the Jewish. This is not real. We live together since long time ago. And when you hear the chant from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. This is not getting rid of the Jewish or the Christians or the Muslims or the atheists or anybody else. It's getting red from the oppressors. Those, people, those oppressors who came to the country of the natives. That's right. And I don't like to use the words of the natives because every country have its own people. They came to us seeking help from the naziest Hitler. That's right. That he was killing them, genociding them, ethnic cleansing them and we supported them until they start killing us until they start taking the country until they start taking the land as they say it's mentioned in my book everyone have a book in every book in our book for example it's mentioned all the lands it's ours can we come outside and take and say oh your home is mine no, no. every land every home have its owner and palestine it's for its owners, it's for its natives, which they are the Palestinians. Second point I want to say it, all as we are seeing outside ceasefire now. I'm not with ceasefire. No. You will say ceasefire when you have two adults fighting, you will tell them to stop. That's right. But you when having one ba one adult beating a baby, you will tell the adult to stop. Yes. Right. So that's what we will say, stop genocide, stop ethnic cleansing. Stop killing children, more than 10,000 children, they are dead until now. It's a big shame, it's a big shame. And who do this are terrorists, who they want to ethnic cleansing those people. This is the first thing. Second thing, as Sister Reem spoke, there is no gray area. If I am walking on a side, on this side, and I saw a baby going to the street, and there is a car will come to hit it, you will take him away from the car or you will not do anything. That's right. You have just two options to stand up for the babies, to stand up for the children right. or to keep silent. Yeah, that's right. Because if you don't want to keep silent, if you want to support genocide, this is the second thing that I want everyone to go and search about it. If you want to support genocide, if you want to support killing the Gaza people, the Semite people of Gaza, Gaza people and Palestinians are Semite <laughs> as the Jewish, as the Assyrian as all others that they are using the Semitic language. Right. Don't use hypocrisy. This is the second thing. The third thing that I want to speak about is the hypocrisy that we have it in everywhere all around it. If we see a black baby dying, we will not speak about it. But if we see with all respect a blonde baby with eyes in Ukraine or wherever is that, we will start speaking about it. We will start supporting those kind of people. But when it's come to Palestinians, to people not from our colors, to people that they are not from our religion, I don't see them. No one see them. I start supporting them. That hypocrisy will not just affect the outsider, it will affect the insider. 
before a few days when they passed a 95 billion aid for Ukraine and Taiwan and Israel. And they forget the people, the people of this land. A lot of people, they need money. Why you did not relieve the student debt? Why you did not, you know, like 95 billion can get rid of the homeless problems. We can build a lot of houses for those homeless people. You can do a lot of things. If you are sick, you should try first to help yourself, then you will go outside to help others. This is the third thing. And the last thing that I will speak about it is, sorry, I took a lot of your times, but let's remember the brothers and sisters at Gaza. They are in a destroyed area that they don't have food, they don't have shelters, they don't have anything, and it's blocked from the north and from the south. The last thing that I will speak about it is rising of the phoenixes. The phoenix is a bird that it's a myth. A lot of you know it, that it's a myth. But listen, guess what? We saw the phoenixes. We saw it at Gaza. Those children that they are coming from the ashes between the destroyed houses, destroyed hospitals, destroyed schools, destroyed churches, destroyed masjid. They are the phoenixes. They are the real phoenixes that they are rising from the ashes. And they will rise and they will build again the country. As always, they will rebuild it again. In all hands, Muslims, Christians, Jewish, even without the religions, they will build the country because it's Palestine and it will stay always Palestine. Thank you very much for coming. All of you brothers and sisters. And I would like to give a big thanks for our sisters here. The sisters that they are re leading this movement. The sisters that they are... Those sisters, they are leading this movement, not just here. Even in Islam, the most precious thing that we have are those sisters. They are the basic of Islam. They give us wealth, they give us kids, they raise, up. they raise us up. And those Palestinians that they are, you are seeing them, with all those patients, with all standing up, they were raised with a Palestinian mother. Thank you very much, everyone.
They need to stop lying. Yes. No more lies. So one, call your senators and representatives every single day. Two, continue with the boycott. Corporations need to stop. They need to stop backing genocide. They need to be on the right side of history. Many have said, if we were alive during the Zionist regime, I'm sorry, during Hitler's time, we would have done things differently. Well, this is your chance. Do things differently. So we're going to boycott? Yes. We're going to make our calls? Yes. You're going to check in? You're going to check in with me, Farida, Kevo. We have plenty of people who know the QR code for the phone calls. Okay? Also, just one last thing. This little guy right here makes his three calls every single day. Little Nazan is an inspiration. I really hope that he inspires you the way he inspires me. And you all inspire us. Thank you, Jazakumullah Khairan. Inshallah, next week, there's a huge um, rally. There's a huge rally on March 2nd. This is going to be our largest rally, the same as the first one that we had, the rainy one. This is a big rally. I need all of you to make a promise to be there. Each one of you is going to tell five people to come with you. Support the movement because I promise you, we're going to leave you behind. Free, free Palestine! Free, free. Slowly now, uh, so the marshals are there to help you disperse through the sidewalk. Please, you can take the sidewalk and we'll disperse shortly. Thank you, folks. Thank you.